So how do you get the ability to run the UI web test you created in multiple browsers? First, you need to have Visual Studio 2012 update one or higher. So this will not work with Visual Studio 2010, which is a common question I get when I work with customers that have not yet upgraded yet to the latest version of Visual Studio. The next thing you need to do is you need to go to the Visual Studio Gallery and there search for cross-browser. Then you will find the Selenium components for coded UI cross-browser testing. You can then download the installer and then you need to install this package on every machine you want to play back the tests. So when you have multiple test machines that are part of a test lab environment, for example in Team Foundation Server Lab Management, then you need to go to all these machines and install this package. You can also search for this package from the Visual Studio IDE. There you can go to the Tools menu and there you go to the Extensions and Update menu. Here you can search the Visual Studio Gallery feed and then install straight from Visual Studio. Another thing of course that you need to install are the browsers Firefox and Chrome in order to play back on those browsers. One last thing to note is rather important and that is that you can only record with Internet Explorer. So if you choose to use the UI map files that we've discussed in the previous modules, then you can only record using Internet Explorer. You can still play back those recordings using the other browsers, but the recording itself needs to be done from IE. You might remember this diagram from Module 1, where we discussed the architecture of Coded UI. To understand how cross-browser playback works, we have to look at the bottom layer of this architectural diagram again. We have seen that Coded UI can work for any technology we'd like, as long as there's a driver that can plug into the technology manager layer, and then we need to be able to select the right driver to run the test. Now for cross-browser playback, what Microsoft did is write a switch in the web driver that can switch between the two technologies for playback. It still uses the standard implementation leveraging the MSHTML DOM of Internet Explorer, but they now added the option to switch to a different engine called Selenium. Selenium is a technology solidly designed for browser testing. Selenium has the ability to playback scripts on different browsers for a few years now. And rather than building a competing technology, Microsoft adapted their engine to use the Selenium web driver to run the tests. You might ask yourself, but what about Safari? I don't see that browser here in the playback browser symbols. Unfortunately, that's true. There's no web driver in Selenium as well for supporting Safari. So that means that we can only play back on other WebKit based browsers like Firefox and Chrome. This can give at least some confidence that it might work in the Apple WebKit based browser. But unfortunately Google forked their implementation of WebKit for their browser. So it becomes more likely each day that you will not find issues that might occur in Safari based browsers because the browsers don't use the exact same rendering engine anymore. So now we know what to install and how it works, but what do I need to do in my code to make this all work? The good news is almost nothing. The fact that Microsoft provides an implementation of their web driver in Coded UI that can switch technologies for playback makes switching browsers a breeze. The key element of making the switch is setting the current browser property of the browser window class. So what we need to do is we need to specify the browser we want to use for playback. If we don't specify anything, or IE, then this means that we play back in Internet Explorer. If we set the current browser property to contain a text string, Chrome, before we call browserwindow.launch, it will launch the Selenium Chrome web driver to run the test. If you specify the string Firefox, then we'll use the default Selenium implementation that plays back on Firefox. One thing we of course also need to do is install the correct browsers on the machine. So we do need to install Google Chrome, Firefox or Internet Explorer on the machine that runs the test. In this demonstration I would like to show you how we can do cross-browser playback. For this I'm going to reuse the MVC Music Store application that we have. 
uh, control F5, you will see that it will start up the application. And we've written a set of page objects for this. And based on that, what we've seen in the previous module, I could shop for album via category. And uh, what I do is I start the browser window, then uh, I'm creating the home page object, and then I'm creating the scenario here. Select category alternative, then select the product carry on, add item to cart, check out, and then check if the page is valid. So let us run this test and see uh, if it's valid on IE. And based on that, we can then install the components that are needed um, to run the test cross browser. Okay, and our test is done. Go to the test explorer. You can see that it was successful. So now let's see how we can make this run cross browser. Now, first, what we need to do is we need to go to the tools, extensions, and updates. And here, what we need to do is we need to go online. And if we go online, we can search here for cross browser. So cross browser. Now I, I do this, then you will see that I get the Selenium components uh, for your coded UI cross browser testing. And I can just download this and it will just go to the download page on the Visual Studio Gallery. Then I can save it here on my machine and then I need to install it. I also could have just gone using Bing or using uh, Google, of course, to the Visual Studio Gallery and here I could search for cross browser as well. And you will see that I have the Selenium components for Coded UI cross browser here, and I can download it from here. And that's the exact same package. The one is that I've done here was just straight from uh, uh, Visual Studio. So if I go to the downloads, you see here that I just downloaded this MSI. This is the one that I need to install. So I'm accepting. Then I would like to add the firewall exception for the Chrome drive, otherwise you get all these pop-ups from the firewall. Okay, so now I'm done. And this is all I need to do to make cross browser run on my machine. By the way, if you look at my machine, I already installed Firefox and Chrome as well. So I have three browsers on this machine at the moment. Okay, so with that, let's go back to Visual Studio and let's see what we need to change to make this run. Now, the only thing that we need to do is that we've seen in the, in the presentation is, is change uh, the current browser property. So the first thing I want to do is I want to run this on the Chrome browser and see uh, how that will work. So run the test. You see it now starts with Selenium, it's the console box that you saw. Passes to the side, clicks through, and voila, done. So you see that it runs through the side exactly the same way, and it succeeded after 16 seconds. Now let's see what happens when we do this in Firefox. And here you can see right away the reason why we want to test on multiple browsers. You just saw that it worked on Internet Explorer, it worked on Chrome. But you now see that when we run this on Firefox, it fails. And it fails on finding a control here. So it's not visible, the element that it's trying to select. So it can find it, but it cannot select it. Okay. Now, one of the things I would like to show you as well is that we can add diagnostics to this so we can see how every control that we are finding uh, translates to Selenium. So that way you can understand how the mapping is done of uh, the search properties back to the Selenium um, selectors. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm again going to add an application config file. And in this config file, I'm again going to add the uh, trace levels. So here I'm enabling the EQT trace level again. And now once I save this and I run the test again, then we can see some diagnostics information on the test run that we just did. Go back 
to our test run here and try that again. Browser is still Firefox, and let's see if we can find some diagnostics here. Run test. So go to the test explorer, see our test run here. Go back here, and you will see the output. And here you can see now the, the translations that are done for uh, cross browser. So here you see that it's trying to query for um, the categories over here. So here you see that I'm searching with an XPath expression on any node that has an ID of categories. Okay, and that's the way it finds the elements using uh, Selenium. It could have translated this as well as a find by ID and then based on the actual ID. Uh, that might have been a little bit faster. Um, but here's the way you can see that stuff is being translated. So here I was looking for an, uh, an anchor element. So here you see it's searching for any anchor that contains the text alternative. Okay, now this is the way you can see that uh, Everything is translated in the Selenium um, uh, driver part of uh, the Coded UI web driver that we got um, based on the installation we just did. So with this, I hope you have some more information uh, how to run on different browsers. And you see by this simple example that it sometimes is very much necessary. Um, and now there, you need to find out why it's not rendering on Firefox and what we need to do to make that happen. But it's not part of this demonstration.